Ask your topic a teacher as a reflective practitioner. Dear students, you at school, college and university have experienced good better, not good teachers. Some teachers make the lesson easy for you and some have not helped you very much at all. तलबा ने अपने स्टूडेंट में अपने अपने स्कूल में कॉलेज में या फिर यूनिवर्सिटी में बहुत सारे उस का तजर्बा लिया होगा जिसमें कुछ उस अच्छे होते हैं कुछ उनके लिए अच्छे नहीं होते कुछ उस ऐसे होते हैं जो कि लेसन को बहुत ही आसान बना देते हैं और कुछ ऐसे भी होते हैं जो कि उनकी कुछ खास मदद नहीं कर पाते Why does this happen? ये क्यों होता है What make the difference between a good teacher and a bad teacher? वो क्या चीज़ें हैं जो कि एक अच्छे उस्ताद और बुरे उस्ताद के दरमियान फ़र्क करते हैं Bad in teaching methodology. जो bad का वर्ड यूज़ हुआ है ये टीचिंग के तरीक़ाकार के हवाले से है How do particular approaches to teaching help or hinder the performance of the individual? We can find answer of this question in the literature on effective teaching and effective teacher. You can see how the ideas about good teacher have changed over the years by reading literature. The literature reflects that how teacher can help learners to develop their knowledge skills and attitude but it is concluded that no single teaching strategy is effective at all the time for all learners there are empirical evidences that inexperienced teachers may not analyze evaluate and direct their teaching practices in matter of cognitive manner that is the mark of reflective practitioner some of the reasons for this are explained in the work of many educationist researchers the following table summarizes some of these reasons and indicates how you might deal with these issues these points are not presented to discourage you but encourage you to face the challenges that is why you may be able to become a reflective teacher and so that you can start to develop strategies for overcoming these difficulties the process of making good teachers is complex reflection is a crucial part of that process and it can be felt without training modeling and structured experience generally reflection is a mode of thinking that can be identified described and felt it also suggests that a teacher who is not reflective can be transformed into one who is reflective this transformation requires knowledge and practice it also requires perceptions because perception is the filter through which individuals interpret their experiences our perception or primarily depends upon how we see the world idealist realist pragmatist it is these belief and values about the world determine what information we use when reflecting on our experiences unless teacher understand that they are doing and why they are doing it there is a little chance that their efforts will result in student learning or that their actions are morally appropriate reflective teaching should involve searching for patterns about one's thinking about classroom lab practices and questioning that why and how some lessons are labeled as success and failure reflective thinking is a learned process that requires time generally there is little if any time left at the days end to reflect on previous events and to design meaningful creative problem solving strategies however 
given the intent of the student teaching experience time for reflection should be a critical and ongoing practice the following are some examples of activities that promote reflection and may be taught to tolerate to fit into the school day and beyond think aloud international internationally express out loud thinking about teaching with your teacher in turn this is especially effective when teaching the teacher in turn how to plan it uncovers the reasoning behind making decisions another component of think aloud is describing and analyzing positive and negative experiences as they surface this can be valuable tool that can be accomplished on one's own or in conjunction with individuals from the mentoring team reflective journal this is a process of recording and analyzing events in a prescribed manner and it can be a productive strategy to foster reflective thinking the journaling process may be formal or informal it can be description of a significant event or an aspect of teaching on which a teacher in turn is asked to focus competency continuum think about the areas in teaching identified in the performance standards on the evaluation form select an area and rank yourself on a continuum from most competent to least competent begin to identify the factors that inhibit your ability to be <coughs> more competent and identify what would be most helpful to gain more competencies Use this continuum as a tool for discussion and action planning between you and your mentoring team. Data collection and action research. Consider a problem area such as student motivation that concerns you. Intentionally design a procedure for collecting information data to learn more about the problem. Use this data to further analyze the situation to act on the problem or to reevaluate video audio tape and reflective analysis view or listen to tape for the purpose of analyzing your instruction and student response the video or audio tape may be used as a tool for reflective dialogue between the teacher in turn and individual from the mentoring team it could be combined with a journal entry written self evaluation this is a structured self analysis in pakistan usually it is used in issb inter services selection board when the candidates who come for their selection in pakistan army navy air force or joint service uh, joint civil services it is written at mid